Hi, and welcome to another painting tutorial by Tabletop Wars. Today we are doing the Herald of Nurgle, the man himself, Typhus, the lord of the first play company, the Harbingers. And I just want to say that this model was an absolute pleasure to paint. So let's get started. I started by assembling the model and priming it Corax white. You'll notice I didn't attach the head. I decided to paint this separate. However, in hindsight, it wasn't that hard to do, and I probably would have just attached it and painted it all as one piece. For the trim, we're going to add a layer of Balthazar gold. We're going to add a base layer of Alejo's Russian uniform World War II. We're going to add this to his shoulder pads, as well as a little bit to his knee pads and a little piece of cloth at the front. This top part we're going to paint with Vallejo's deep yellow. We're going to add a base coat to his Man Reaper of Vallejo's gunmetal. We're also going to paint some of the tubing on the Cataphact armor with gunmetal. For the cylinder, I tried to make it look like it was copper by mixing one part Vallejo gunmetal with one part Vallejo rust. The bone and skull are going to be painted with a coat of rack carved flesh. I wanted to break up all the Balthazar gold that would be around Typhus's head. So what I did is I painted the recesses and the tubing using Vallejo chrome. For Typhus's nurgling buddy and the boils he's playing with, we're going to add a layer of Everland Sunset. I've gone ahead and painted a lot of the small details on Typhus. I used jeans to the purple for the string. I used Bugman's Glow for the tubes, a touch of pallid witch flesh to the top of the boils, Kislev flesh for this tube, Baylor Brown for the wrapping, and Dryad Bark for the handle. The next step is to apply shading. Lots and lots of shading. We begin by applying Agrax Earth Shade over all the brass, Nun Oil over all the gunmetal, then we're going to add Seraphim Sepia to all the green, as well as all the bones and skulls. The yellows will be shaded with Drakenhof Nightshade to turn them green. For the wooden staff and leather wrapping, we're going to shade this with Drukiv Violet. We're also going to use Drukiv Violet for any of the tubes and leather straps on the model. And finally, we're going to add Reichland Flesh Shade to any of the boils and open wounds. Now that everything has been shaded, we're going to start with the highlights. The first highlight we're going to do is a simple dry brush of Warfang Brown over the wooden handle. Then we're going to dry brush all the leather wrapping and straps with Vallejo's Leather Brown. Next, we dry brush Typhus's little nurgling friend with Slanesh Gray. The model is coming along quite well now, but you know, his armor just looks a little bit too clean for Death Guard. We need to dirty it up, and we're going to do that by giving it a heavy wash of Seraphim Sapir. Next, we're going to add streaks and stains all over the armor. To do this, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade, and we're just going to put dots and splotches all over the white armor, the green pauldrons, as well as any of the metal parts, such as the scythe and any tubing. This will help make the armor look rusted and dirty. While we're already using the Agrax Earthshade, we're going to darken the base of all of Typhus's horns, such as the one on his knee. So all we're going to do is take a little bit of the shade 
and just paint it into the bottom quarter of the horn, which will make the base darker than the top. Using the same technique as the Agrax Earthshade, I've already added some more streaks and stains to the white and green armor bits using non oil. Then we're going to grab a thin tip brush and we're going to shade in the recesses of the model to make the highlights stick out more. At this point, I should mention that I did add a few drops of seraphim sepia to all the metal parts, such as the scythe head and the tubes. This is to make them look aged and weathered. And now it's time for everybody's favorite part, edge highlighting. And boy, does this model have a lot of it. The green is going to be highlighted using Death Guard Green. The brass will be highlighted using Vallejo Rust and Chrome. And the white will be highlighted using Corax White. The bones are highlighted using Vallejo's Bone White. And the metal bits are highlighted with Vallejo Chrome. For Tefis's head, I've gone ahead and already painted all the base layers. I've painted the horn with gun metal and rack carp flesh, the cheek orbs with Balthazar gold, and the helmet itself with Corax white. The reason I've added a base layer of Corax white, even though the head was primed Corax white, is because the primer is a little bit too gray and the bottle paint is whiter, and I wanted to make the helmet whiter than the rest of his armor. Because we want to keep the helmet white, we're going to add Seraphim Sepia only to the recesses and the edges. We then add non oil to his mouthpiece and to the horn. And finally, we add Agrax Earth Shade to the cheeks and bone. The final step is to add some edge highlights with Vallejo Dead White. Moving on to the Destroyer Hive, we're going to add a wash of Druki Violet to all of the rot flies. Then we're going to add a light layer of Seraphim Sepia, but only to the bodies, avoiding the wings. This is followed by a heavy dry brush of Lucius Lilac. And then we're going to do a light dry brush of Slanesh Gray. Now that the rot flies are done, it's time to paint the smoke. Now to do this, I use three colors. I use Vallejo Green Fluorescent, London Gray, and Dead White. I then wet blend all three colors on the model. I try to get the London Gray, which is a dark gray, into the deeper recesses of the smoke, and the Dead White on the outer edges, and then the green throughout to give the smoke a greenish tinge to make it look more unnatural. Now that Typhus is fully assembled, we can take a moment to enjoy just how amazing this sculpt really is. All right, break time's over, back to work. Just a couple more things left to do. First thing is I'm going to paint his eyes and vents with Vallejo Green Fluorescent. I'm then going to add just a little bit of Vallejo's Yellow Fluorescent to the center of the vents and eyes. Of course, no Death Guard model will be complete with at least some Nurgle's Rot. We're going to add this to the boils and the open wounds on Typhus and the Nurgling. We're also going to add a little bit of blood for the blood god just to make the sores extra disgusting. And there we have him, Typhus, host of the Destroyer Hive, ready to lead his armada in the Terminus Est across the galaxy.